I'm Jerry Vass. Over a period of 30 years, we trained 12,000 executive level salespeople, MBAs and PhDs. We learned that selling at the executive level requires the correct conversation, not a pitch. So these series of videos are about how to have an executive conversation using the correct mechanics. There are 16 myths that salespeople accept as received wisdom. Believing these myths cause them to fail because they design their pitch using fraudulent assumptions. You may find some of them outright funny, as we did. Eight of these myths are discussed in this part one video. The second eight are discussed in a separate part two. Find it nearby on YouTube. This myth is seen as an undisputable truth, yet in 12,000 tries, we have never found anyone who could convincingly sell themselves first. Like levitation, it's impossible, but it's a ton of fun to watch people try to fly. Executives have little time to invest in the seller's small talk, which makes the underlying premise of selling yourself first exactly wrong. Even great execution cannot save a poor idea. This evergreen philosophy is supposed to signal executives that your company is compulsively attentive to them. This philosophy is seriously undermined by the arrogance many firms and their professionals unconsciously project. They don't let the buyer talk. They rarely inquire about the buyer's real business or personal problems. They relentlessly opine. They bore their buyers to death. Actually, for most firms, customers come second. The glories of us comes first. This is so obviously untrue as to be laughable. Buyers are often wrong about everything from the weather to the economy. They have old information, misinformation, partial facts, misperceptions, and misunderstandings. But they are always right about their business and personal issues, their visions, feelings, ambitions, and they always have the money and you don't. In business, the word partnership means to share financial responsibilities, that is, both profits and losses generated. Your offer to become partners prompts the executive's question. Mr. or Mrs. Seller, what portion of my liabilities will you assume to get my business? We have never met a seller who wanted to be a partner after carefully thinking out this rather silly offer. Conventional wisdom holds that building a relationship with the buyer is a prerequisite to a sale. This is untrue. This is a trap, and the nuances are endless. Trying to build a relationship before the sale puts the cart before the horse. Performance comes first, the relationship second. Personal connections are built on actual performance, not promises, not expensive dinners, not basketball tickets, or remembered birthdays. Building a relationship with a new buyer takes time because trust, the basis of friendship, must be established first. Actually, everyone in a category of business is perceived as average, or the best, depending on how you look at it, not only in the executive's eyes, but in his own. When we ask different firms in the same industry, compared to your competitors, how would you rank the quality of your firm and its services? In the top third, middle, or lower third? Everyone's answer is always the same, top third which of course in reality makes them all equal and interchangeable, congruent with the executive's perception, which is, everyone is pretty good. 76% of salespeople are unable to define their clients' larger business problems that are solved by the seller's products and services. Professionals are experts in their field 
and their overabundance of technical knowledge often gets in the way of getting hired. Their presentation about their expertise is inadvertently designed to obfuscate, not to clarify, complicate, not simplify. 89% do not understand what business they're really in from their client's point of view. For most professionals, recognizing the following law leaves a scuff mark on the brain. Our business is different, is usually the manager's position about his or her firm. It has different processes or approaches that, it is hoped, differentiate the firm and its offerings. This message is loudly and relentlessly proclaimed in sales meetings and boardrooms. Our business is the same, describes the feeling or certain knowledge of the people who sell the stuff. Usually, these subversive admissions come to us in private whispered conversations, well out of management's hearing. Many salespeople believe that in spite of hoping to appear different in the executive's eyes, it is ultimately impossible because their stuff is the same as their competitors. Managers and sellers are both right because both points of view center on features, not benefits. You'll find more information on this and other selling mechanics at the executive level by looking at our book, Soft Selling in a Hard World and Decoding the BS of Business on Vast.com and Amazon.com.